on singing with me I wanna rock with the dudes to fear is no excuse so Baby, tell me what you say Hey, 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 everybody, this is M-A-D-U-S-A Made in the USA, baby And you are listening to 5 Minute Mondays Paving the Way Trash Talk Podcast With your host with the most Or maybe sometimes not Medusa It is great to be here and uh, bring you an amazing guest. But before I do, this guest um, and I have a history of banter. Banter is a good word. And it is a good banter with so much respect. Um, I, I never really got to do much with him in the ring like I was with other men in the business um, during my time, but he is renowned, known for his, um, let's say his authentic, his uh, background of kicking. Um, He has a background of authoritiveness in his own right. He is prominent and he has made the way and paved the way for so many other Japanese wrestlers in this business of pro wrestling. And it is with my honor uh, and so excited to bring a friend of mine, Sayono, on to the spotlight. Hey, dude! Oh my gosh! Hi! Hey, how are you? You look wonderful, beautiful oh. as always. Oh, you always say that to all the women because I, before I even got you on here, I, I just, I had to do my due diligence and go back and look at a lot of your old interviews. And I'm like, yep, Sonny hasn't changed. Every woman he does an interview with, it's like, oh, you're so lovely. You're so beautiful. You just know how to put people over. You're just, you're just, you know how to say it. Good salesman always does that. Always a good salesman and yeah. always... And always an authentic, good Japanese character <laughs> salesman. Yes, you know, I mean, but you know, well, you know, you know, you know, my lovely wife Julie. Yes. And people Beautiful. look at us together and they go, "How's that work?" <laughs> it doesn't well, matter how we go. We can go through a TSA and they goes, "Excuse me, ma'am, would you sit back over there? I'm trying to help this young man." No, you know, <laughs> nobody thinks we're together. <laughs> well, even back then. Yeah. Um, um, people, even back then people kind of gave you guys a double take, but I think nowadays oh. people, I think it's changed a little bit. There's more acceptance and things of, of different sizes, shapes, colors, authenticity. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. e- ethics, uh, whatever. Um, but Julie, um, I met her and you way back. When was the first time I actually met you? Well, when you first came over from WWE or F. Or whatever. So the- yeah, W E F G H I J K. Yeah, when you first came over, because you know I was, what well, you know I. L- let's go back a little bit. When That's we, where I am trying. Is where when I first met you. When yeah, I first met you. When we first, when you came in, the mandate I got from Eric Bischoff was, okay, we want to do something with Deuce, but we have to get the Japanese girls to work with her because. Because of how I, I think that's the same problem you had even at, at, at WWE. Um, you know, just having it takes two to dance, and having someone like Akira Hokuto or Bonakono, people you worked with in Japan, with all Japan, you know, that brought a best in you. We knew that. You know, it's, it's hard for you to work with domestic talent, meaning American talent, who has not gone through the system. And we talked about the, the horrific you know, the system you went through with old Japan and, you know, the, the, the I don't think people would even have any idea kind of stuff that you, uh, you know, power through in Japan. Um, so before you start there, let's kind of go back to how your relationship started with um, Eric Bishop. So I believe you and Eric um, met back in the 70s and it had to do with martial arts. So you have a very extensive martial arts background. So that is legit between you and Eric, correct? Right. Eric, you know, Eric actually fought on like CBS Sports and and, and I fought on, on uh, World, uh, um, what's, what's called the Professional Karate Association, PKA. Mm-hmm. And I was ranked number one from 1975 to 81. Holy I was crap. Ranked, 
That was the number wow. one band away in the world back in the days. Wow. Back in the days, so I could go, Dukes. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Go ahead. And Eric was uh, uh, managing karate school, and we used to travel. So there's different kind of karate, right? There's kickboxing, which is mm -hmm. actual punching and kicking, and and it, you know you you do it to knock the guy out. And then you have what we call point karate, which is control blow stuff. That's what Eric and I used to do. And there's, you know, you still hit each other, but they stop after each, kind of like a fencing, stops after each blow. So, so were we'll you play. in Minnesota at the time? Is that how you crossed paths doing this? Yeah, and Eric, what brought you to Minnesota then to get well, to Well, Eric point? was in Minneapolis, and I was in, right. in, in Iowa, right over the border, about oh, two okay. hour drive, and I would go up there to train because there wasn't, you know, there wasn't a lot of people um, that I, I could train with. So I would go up to, uh, there was a guy named Gordon Frank, who was a super lightweight champion of the world, 135-pound um, weight class. And I was bantamweight, like 125 weight class. So uh, um, I would go up and train, and that's how I met Eric. Eric was the uh, um, collegiate wrestler that blew out his knee, but he uh -huh. still wanted to compete, so he got involved in karate. Eric and, is a very competitive man in oh, every very. every yeah. department. Yes. Yes. And and that's how we, we just traveled, you know. I mean, we're in early twenties, if you can imagine, you know, uh going to a karate tournament in Georgia, um, North Carolina, Florida, you know, Chicago, all you know, all over. Um when you're young. And, 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 you know, all you want to do is fight and date girls. Mm. So. Oh, dear Lord. So both of you were single at that time when you guys oh, were, yeah. Oh, yeah. you were. And so you guys just, just a great bond right away. And then you guys became instant. It was it like one of those instant friends break bread type yeah, of thing. Yeah, you know, we had a common goals and Eric, Eric was a pretty, you know, he was a pretty good fighter. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, but his problem was. And, and I'll be the first one to tell you, you know, he uh, was a little too aggressive on control point fighting stuff. Mm -hmm. so, so he, he, I think he. Well, he on got, his defense, he was just so used to being super competitive, though, with collegiate Yeah, wrestling, but, you know, competitive meaning you got to, you want to win the, whatever the rules yeah. are, right? Or well, Eric would, you know, he has a tendency to stomp on people's heads and stuff, and, and <laughs> he, he would get disqualified. Now, now he got. Well, I will it. tell you, he probably got disqualified more, you know, when he was winning a match because he got a little, little hot headed. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. That's all right. That's all right. That's awesome. I've just gained more respect for Eric. Well, what the yeah. hell? God yeah. dang. Well, a little more kudos for Eric is because um, when I actually went into WCW um and he brought me in i mean he was very cool to where i was doing a promo and he was the guy that was in the headgear and uh you know we were both in karate right. stuff and i was just getting back from japan and he let me cut a promo and i was just swinging on him you know just punching him kicking him up that was eric in the corner and i just oh, like you know really? yes wow. yeah and i was like i'll never forget that he let me do that of course you know you know he just you know whatever he was he was he was a good Eric. He was a good Eric. <laughs> yeah. No, he, he was he was he was excited having you. And one of the things he, you know, he reached out to me and and said, hey, we, you know, let's let's get some people that, that we can make. So he hired you to be an interpreter from the very beginning. Is that why? Because of your Japanese background? Right. So, you know, he was already um, in WCW. And and uh, the prior management of WCW had an issue with New Japan Pro Wrestling. Yes, they, yes. They, they had they had a, a talent exchange program, and New Japan had paid upward about a half million dollars mm -hmm. to the prior management, but then sent any talent. It was very intermittent, wasn't it? It was just very little. Yeah, it was. It, it, so that was a big issue. You know, is that New when Japan they had did, no? Was Hakushi in WCW or was uh, it WWF? No, WCW. New Japan felt that they didn't get their money's worth. So Eric called me up one day and he said, hey, I'm going to Japan. You know, how's your Japanese? You, you want to go with me? And, you know, and he actually didn't say anything. I don't know any of this stuff, but the issue they have with New Japan and WCW. And, you know, we went to a meeting with the, 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 the five of the scariest looking Japanese guy, Masa Saito. Masa, you know, yeah. Sagaguchi, 
uh, Ricky Choshu, you know, those guys, mm -hmm. scary looking Japanese people. And, and, you know, I sit down and Eric and I sit down across from them and they look like we stole money from them. And turns out we did steal money from those people. And they never so, got it. Yeah. 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 They never got the talent they paid for. Jesus. So, yeah. So, you know, and, and of course, was that Bill Hattori, Watts? Was that Bill Watts before? I believe, yeah, he was in charge, right? Okay, yeah. And, uh, you know, what it was, the communication issue or whatever it mm -hmm. was, it just couldn't get the talent over there. So one of the questions Masa Saito asked, because Eric offers, hey, let me make it up to you. Don't pay us anything for this coming 12 months. Um, uh, we'll send you the talent, and I want to continue the, the talent exchange program. And they said, that's great, but issue is always communication. And Eric says, without a skip and a beat, mind you, I don't work for Eric. I just want right. to tag him on. He says, Oh, that would be that would be Sonny. Call Sonny <laughs> and call Sonny and I will always take his call and you'll have an answer to but your But you question. weren't just Sonny off the bat. Your real name is Kazu, right? Kazuo, yeah. Yep, yeah. Kazu yeah. Ishawaki or no. Um No, o Ono is Ono is my last name. It is Ono. So yeah. what's Ishawaka? Ishikawa. Uh, Ishikawa. I think that was a name that I that I used when we did when I first time I was on camera was I was supposed to be the the, the WCW um, board of commissioner or something to yeah. reinstate Ric Flair. Okay. Okay. All right. So all right. Go ahead. So you were there, and he hires you as um, translation and on the exchange program, and said right. no pay. So you start bringing in Masa Saido. Um, gosh, who else was it? Fuji. What? what who else was it? Oh, uh, we brought in Jushin Thunder Liger. We brought yep. in Sasaki. Uh, they're top guys at the time. Um, uh, Kanemoto and Otani. That was their cruiserweight yes. guy. We brought him in, and we did we did that WCW versus New Japan mm -hmm. um, on on I think one of the pay per view and, and WCW, and that's how I became the manager. None of them spoke English, so you know I became the uh, the rich Japanese guy. You got to remember at the time before the bubble burst, you know Japanese was here in, in the United States buying golf courses and, right. and hotels and and building in New York. So right. that was a character that, 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 uh, you know, and Hawaii. That, <laughs> yes. A lot of Hawaii. Well, we, couldn't, Hawaii. <laughs> we, we, yeah, we, we couldn't, we couldn't, we couldn't win it in World War II. So we decided to just buy it. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucked up. <laughs> yeah. that's how oh that my God. So that could be, since you said World War II, what was the thing where you guys had the, um, the pay-per-view and had the Japanese and you guys named it World War Three or something? Or oh, you, what, yeah. what the hell was that? I don't what know. What deal was yeah. that? Let's talk about that. What, no, such that this is an even head. flow. What was that? I was scratching my head. I, I just <laughs> sure want to call it World War Three. You know, <laughs> right, anyway. did, tell me who's I, that, did, no, was that, not my idea. was that Bischoff's idea? I don't know whose idea it was. I, it was, you know, <laughs> Probably, probably wasn't too good, but. But I mean, hey, okay, it was funny, but maybe it was a good idea, but. Yeah, pr yeah, probably inside joke more than anything else. Yeah. Nobody in the was laughing. Well, yeah, that was a good, uh, good laugh. World War Three. Oh, that, that's, uh, yeah, pretty funny. So you had, um, so you started um, with the camera and the guy with the, you know, yeah. taking the pictures yeah, and so, the Fuji rich camera, Instamatic, you know. Yeah. The, the, throwaway camera that we used to have and i remember you, know, you just the, take the flash i remember that thing would just be clicking away was there right. film in there ever absolutely I, yeah I, I i developed some of those you still some have those pictures some of that i can't show of you and me together but. oh you're so full of shit oh my <laughs> god in your dreams where's damn it, it is in my dream i mean i told you about it i mean I yes can't you yeah, you and your uh, lascivious uh, made up fucking acts. That's bullshit. You 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 audience will tell you, you. and Layfield. I, I don't know about you two. You both okay. <laughs> no, but oh, you that's know, a whole nother thing. We all oh. we all fantasize about Medusa. You no, know? okay, just no. Let's just stop that there. That's just that's I'm you can't you can't win with me with that bullshit. No, it never worked and never will. Okay, so so when you were when you were cre yeah. When you were creating this um, 
um, this this relationship with New Japan, yeah, um, which worked really well. Um, really, really well. You knew damn well. Now, was Kensuke and um, Hokuto married at that time? No. Well, let's see. Yeah, Wait, they yeah, were already 97. Married. It was 97. Yeah. yeah, they were married because 95, which I'm going to tell you exclusive here. Most a lot of people knows, but I'll tell you this. You know, you know, we went to North Korea in 95 mm. with Muhammad Ali and with 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 the uh, invitation from Antonio Inoki. We're talking about North Korea way before Rodman. You yeah, know? yeah. Rod, <laughs> sit down, Rodman. <laughs> and, yeah. and uh, uh uh, that's why Kensuke Sasaki and Akira Hokuto became one, a couple, yeah. And that and was so, like totally against their, I mean, you guys. Oh, oh my God. You know, before we went there, they told us, as you can imagine, hey, everything you say is being recorded. There's camera, microphone everywhere. So don't say anything negative about the country. Yeah. You know, they're watching you and, you know. But apparently, Kensuke Sasaki and Akira Hokuto didn't really care, you know, because because um, that's probably an archive in, in a Korean Secret Service film somewhere. Um, yes. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. What great information, though. Um, yeah, I nearly that's... shit myself when I heard that. I'm like, what? Kensuke well, funny, and Akira? Oh, my God. Funny part was, funny part was, there was a bunch of Japanese boys was taking a coffee cup and putting it on a wall and listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. That's the truth. And That's, listening, yeah, trying to listen through and get some information. Oh my gosh. Cause I remember back when I was in Japan that, I mean, it was so frowned upon to even have a relationship with a, a, oh, yeah. a man that most of us, you know, just you were single right. or most of them were with other women within the company. So, yeah. you know, no. Hey. yeah, no, you know, so, uh, so the, yeah, so the, to answer your question, when we brought Hokuto in, of course, to, to feud with you and... and um, So let's stop there. So yeah. you knew deep down inside that this was a mission with New Japan and getting Kensu Kensuke and um, that him being with her, you knew that this was part of it and talking to him, to Bischoff, saying, look, this is almost a twofer. Well, let's start... You know, Bischoff said, you know, when when before he brought me in that he was going to build a woman's division, we're going to get, you know, a title, we'll put a title right. on you, blah, blah, blah. And right. so you made a deal saying with Bischoff and them that, hey, it has to go, you know, Hokuto comes in, she gets the title because she's not doing a job for Medusa. No, that the, the deal was actually, this is how I remember it. You know, I wasn't in on a lot of that booking stuff, but what I was told from the beginning, the Hokuto came in. Um, Masa Saito was was there basically, you know, anything to do with uh, um, international talent exchange. Masa was a guy. Mm -hmm. So Masa Saito said, hey, we, we want to bring Hokuto in to feud with Medusa because you just came in. Mm -hmm. And we were looking for somebody who can go with you. You know, there isn't a lot of domestic talent that can, you know, who can actually make you shine. Yeah, so, but Hokuto was after Bull Nakano. No. Yes, yeah, she was because that, yes, because it was my oh, retirement. Yeah. That's, right. That's right. So uh, for so, so the deal was, way it was supposed to go down was that you for, was supposed to go back to Japan mm -hmm. and, and win the title there. Yeah, but, but, but what happened was it became a retirement match for some reason she won the title and then it it was dissolved so let's we're going to go ahead and bring up this picture of akita right now and this picture here is like she i mean this was like before pandemic time here in the united states so she has this white outfit on she has the mask on she has the big headdress it's absolutely gorgeous um tell me about this i mean they put in a lot of money back then um into their outfits yeah, well, one, i think one of the things that that the ladies of all Japan and, and especially lady, you know, Joshi, which is, you know, uh, uh, literally mean as women, um, was they always had great costumes, you know, mm. I mean, the grander was the, is better with, with, uh, um, so she, they spent time and money on those 
entrance, you know, mm -hmm. costumes. Um, now, of course, that had actually woos through U.S. now. I mean, you, you look, you know, a lot of the top American, uh, not, not only female, but certainly the, the male talent, you know, in New Japan wears, you know, grander gowns and stuff like that. Their robes, know. et cetera, which yeah. always been their yeah. big, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but, um, but yeah, they did spend a lot of money and, and, you know, uh, uh, she looked fantastic when she came out. It was scary as hell because she had this big gas mask on and people yeah. are like, what the hell is this? What is going on? Yeah. And so when this was taking place and I was told that she was winning the title, and that this is going to become a retirement match. It was basically told to me that um, maybe we can get Eric, you know, maybe I'll get yeah, Eric we'll, on here we'll and we can, done. you know, and I'll discuss it with him and how it really went. But what was told to me was that, you know, there's just, I I just didn't like the, the, the way women's wrestling was going. I was promised something that we we're going to have a women's division, right. but the excuse was, oh, there's not enough women out there. But then again, there was women to do um, programs with. I mean, if we had 50 guys in the back and we could do programs with 50 guys, why couldn't you do a program with two women? To me, that was just lack on the creative side because no, I, we had we had the talent to do it. Yeah. It was just overlooked. And also the 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 program of women's wrestling was changing to more uh scantily TNA. you know what i'm saying tna which is fine and i hated it it's not what i wanted oh, to I do know, it's I not know. you know what i mean but sex sold it was the time it was the sign of the times and that was basically if that's the way they were going and we didn't want just a regular wrestling then you know i when, when my contract was done in 2001 i was just i was leaving plus yeah. i had some friends still that you know working in wwf at the time were telling me that hey vince may be buying you know negotiating with wcw beforehand and i said well i'm going to quit give my notice and get the f out of here because there's no way i'm rolling over the name medusa because it's trademarked and i'm out right. Right. So no, that's how that took place. And I never did get the title. I never was told that, hey, we're going to go to Japan and you're going to win the title over there. That was never told to me. Never. See, that's, that's, that's how it was told to me. It was, oh. it, it was, it was lost it was, in translation then, I guess. <laughs> yeah. No, we were going to win it. And I don't know. Remember we did this, we did the segment. It, it was like retirement match. If you lose, you quit kind of thing. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. I don't know where that, where that came from. I have no idea. I don't know. I remember initially we were going to You played win dumb it. real well, but that's good. No, it's true. Yeah. We, we, we were going to win it. Then we were going to defend it. You were going to, you was going to job twice. Then, then you were going to go to Japan and we were going to, you know, at one of the big shows and you yes. were going to win it. Cause that, that was, that was unthinkable, right? Because usually people go to a foreign country and their baby face or their people usually goes over, you know, and it would have been so different. Because I remember having a discussion with um, Kevin Sullivan. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it would it'd be so cool. It'd be so unexpected. People won't believe that actually. Winning it know, in their country. And talent, like she did in ours. I mean, right. what the hell? So, but it was kind of weird. I just, it was a, it was a weird time. And, um, I don't know. Well, you know, if Eric can remember what the truth of that was, that would be really cool to, you know, but get that's it how it was laid out to me originally. And I don't know what happened, yeah. how I ended now when, uh, of course, when, when Russo came in, you know, they got rid of all the Japanese and Mexicans and, and, and yeah, the, you know what, that's another thing I want to talk to you about. So that, so that's another thing. I can't believe that Russo said Russo fucking said that he, I don't know who he told it to. If it was, no, if it, it was, was an interview on WCW, one of those website things. He said it in an interview. This is what he said. Quote me, tell me if I'm wrong. I remember him saying something like, um, you know, I don't even know why we have, um, Japanese or Asian people on TV. They don't draw money. Is that, was it something like yeah, that? Yeah. I mean, you can look this thing up. If you look up, if you look up Russo and racism, oh, this will all come up. But um, he said that what, live on an interview. It, it, absolutely. And it, holy it, shit! And he said, I haven't seen it, no, but holy he shit! Said, I don't. I'll send it to you. I, I don't give a shit about the Mexican. I don't give shit about the Japanese. You know, Do you think you he's were, gonna say, "Hey, bro, bro, I was working it. 
I was do I was doing the business. Hey, then, bro. Well, you know what he doesn't. You want. never know because I don't know what context. I'd have to listen to his interview to see right. what kind of context. You know. But what what he said, what he what he said, what he didn't realize is after that he, you know, eliminated ninety percent of Japanese and Mexicans, and and and. Which is fine and dandy, you know, he's the booker, he can do that. But the problem was you can't you can't use race as a reason. No. Or gender no, as not a live, not people. blatant. Yeah. <laughs> and not only that, not only that, you know, at that time, New Japan was almost paying us million dollars a year on talent exchange program. He lost that too. So, you know, he goes to tell you that he had no idea when he got rid of of course, New Japan relationship went away right after that. You know, I wasn't there anymore. So wow. yeah, that, that went out the window. And Holy that's... crap. And New so Japan... all of that what all of that left when he came in, he got rid of all of that? Yeah. Oh. Then then look what they did to you though. I mean, oh, yeah. now you have no more people you can really battle with. And the, he, you know, he wasn't into women wrestling as as an athlete, like he supports the, the fact that he he did. He said he was behind me one hundred percent, and he yeah, wanted a woman to put your name with the, uh, the with, with barbecue the matches, table. nightgown matches, right. evening matches, and just that's. Right. I'm just like I'm out. Yeah, I mean, you know, this totally disregard of your ability. I mean, you know, one of the greatest thing about you, Medusa, was that. You were the one of the very few, very few that actually went through the, as I said earlier, that got down to the system, paid your dues in all Japan. And you and I talked about horrific things that you went through from, you know, concussion to waking up in a bus, knowing, didn't know where you were from. Didn't know where the fuck I was. No, I didn't, man. You know, people, so you can go with these girls that was really, I think they went above and beyond being if i can use the word stiff yeah i mean you guys were really killing each other yeah but that ring all japan women's ring you that was the stiffest ring i think anybody all the men would tell you that was the stiffest ring ever in professional wrestling that thing when you watch it today on youtube that bitch does not even give not Uh, even an inch not even an inch an inch and the the stuff you guys were doing and the people should go back and watch those matches the stuff you guys were doing in the match, you know, the double stomps from the turnbuckles and, and, Oh, and, the dives oh. outside and all of it. Oh, I mean, yeah, God. it took a year for me to wake up really sunny to realize that they were actually being stiff with me and beating the shit out of me to gain respect. And I finally, after a year, I'm like, Oh, okay. I am supposed to fight back. <laughs> yeah. You're supposed to give back some receipts. Yeah, give them a little receipt, and then they're like, "Oh, okay, you got our, you, you've earned our respect now." <laughs> the bitch woke up, <laughs> right? But, but you know, so people don't realize there isn't. I mean, you know, I mean, times are different. It's, it's, yes. it's much more different now. But um, the 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 you guys are way way ahead of our time. I, I mean, was I was ahead of my time, but I look at it that, and it's it's. You know, each time, you know, I talk to wonderful people like you from the past and, um, you know, and talk about our stories and our, you know, the adversities in it and the overcoming of these tragedies to triumphs. And, you know, they're great stories. And a lot of every path wouldn't have been made, you know, for the future, you know, if it wasn't for the people like, you know, us and the people before us and all of that. And we can sit here and... um, Again, it takes every era, every generation to bring where we're at today. Now we've got people, women. Um, I mean, my God, I just heard a rumor. I hope it's true, but I just heard that uh, a woman just signed a um, $15 million contract. And that's over whatever, could be over a couple year time, right? Or is it 25? I don't know. But, you know, from where I made under six digits a year, Yes, my dear. And it was Eric Bischoff that gave me my first 75000 is what he paid me. And then he actually um, agreed to pay me $150,000. And that's, and that's it. That's wow. all I, that's, that's the most I ever made in the business. Wow. 
Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, all of you. And, you, you know, I just, it, it uh, and knowing what everyone else, you know, you know, knowing what they were getting paid. Yeah, I did all of that. Yeah, I did this and that. Um, could I, you know, could I have fought harder to change? Uh, could I have um, demanded this or that? But I was. I was trying to change the trajectory of women's wrestling in every which way, not just in the ring for respect, but for the standards, you know, um, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. And you too. And that's what I'm, I just, let's get off me. And, and what I'm saying is, is that for you coming in and being a manager of a different culture, I mean, that was funny. That was huge. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. really. Opportunity was great. And it was one of those things that, okay, we need talent. We have a new Japan talent. They're great talent, great workers. Mm -hmm. But none of them can speak. And listen, <laughs> this goes on today. You know, you got great right? talent everywhere. Um, um, you can, it's, it's hard for a writer. First of all, it's hard for a writer to write for you if they're, they, don't, they're not, they don't understand the culture, they don't understand, you know, a lot of that, where you come from, right? Exactly. So, you know, it, it's hard for a southern white guy from Alabama to write about the guy from Japan. Mm -hmm. So you know? do you know Spanish though too? Didn't you do some luchadors? Didn't you yeah, manage some I managed luchadors? Yeah, I managed the luchadors, same thing. You know, just, just you know, because um, they needed a mouthpiece. You know, to, yes. to writer need to create a story and it's hard to, hard to uh, relate the story without somebody speaking. You know, that's what managers are for. Um, certainly in most cases, you know, and, and, well, and then, hold on a second. So you, a manager is that person, that placemat is a staple for people that have charisma in the ring, but yet maybe their translation isn't well, or maybe they don't do great promos. Uh, right. right. And, um, right. so do you feel that that was the case when you managed Ernest Miller? I thought Ernest Miller, what about Ernest Miller? Ernest Miller thing was, it was Ernest, the one who approached me and wanted, you know, went to Eric. Our background's in martial arts, so that's number one. Yes, yes. So, so number two was that, if you remember Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker thing, and, and that was, so I was no longer, I was not a mouthpiece for Ernest. I was really a literally a sidekick, you know? So, so mm -hmm. I was a martial arts sidekick for him um, at, at that manager. So my role actually changed. I never to do for, just extra dirty things. What? Because I was saying, Ernest, right. Ernest Miller could talk. Yeah, Ernest. Ernest is a great. He can cut promos. You know. Yeah. So, so the thing was with me and him was I was the reason why he lost many cases. <laughs> if you look at a lot of Ernest's matches, yeah. you know, you know, yeah. he he lost matches because he was trying to save me or or you know, I accidentally did something to cause him to lose. That was mostly the reason. Ernest lost more matches than he won. You know, and not mainly not because of his sake, because he was, you know, was because of you. Fault. Yeah, correct. So but I, see, that would happen to to circle back. That would happen. And we're going to get to that when you're done was kind of like with you and Bol Nakano and me right. and Bol Nakano. So we'll get to that in a second. Go ahead and finish. Yeah. So, you know, that, that was the thing. Um, you know, we did uh, we did a lot of little funny bit that you might be able to go back and YouTube and find it. Was, we were doing that, like I said, Jackie Chan, Chris Tucker thing. We yes. one time one time on Saturday night TV taping, what I what I got to do was I went to the producer and I said, Hey, you know, the one that said, Hey, you have a match with Prince Ikea. I said, oh, great. oh my God. So so what I did was I went in a ring with uh -huh. Ernest. Yeah. Before, you know, we went in the ring first. Ernest cut the promo. I interrupt Ernest and I go, Hey, great match for you. <laughs> oh no, I know. Here's what I said. I have a great surprise gift for you. He says, What's that? I have Prince. Oh. And he goes, Prince, 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 what? The Prince, the purple one. The Prince, the singer. He goes, you got to be kidding. Then I started singing Purple Rain. Oh, hell. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, was, I mean, I can't do a karaoke to save my life. So <laughs> it was really bad. And that's when music hits and Prince Ikea came in. Right. Then we did, then the week after that, there was a wrestler named Al Green, if you remember, a big burly guy. Al Green. Oh yeah. my God! Wait. So, so next week, I said, "Hey, sorry about the mix-up and you know, Prince. Oh. 
you know, the the symbol one. But I got it the for symbol real. symbol one. <laughs> this week I got Al Green. You know, let's get together. You know, I started singing that. You don't. <laughs> So it was a comedy thing we were doing, you know what right. I mean? Right. And I thought you and Ernest was great. And how did the how did Saturn get involved in that? Though? Well, the Saturn thing was uh Kath Hayashi, if you remember, Who? Kath Hayashi was looking for a partner because we were oh. Kaz and I uh because uh, him being Japanese and not being able to speak, and I told him he needed to he needed to be with me, but he didn't want to be because that was a story. So Ernest would, you know, beat on him and we would kind of torment him. So he asked for a tag match and he gets granted a tag match between him and somebody else and Ernest and I, and that went to the pay-per-view. He goes around and asks people, uh, it was really funny because Scott Hall volunteered this one, you know, yeah. big star, right? Biggest, one of the biggest star we had. Yeah, but he time. loved gimmicks, man. And, and I would, you know, he, you know, with 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 uh, he would go from talent to talent, asking to be a a partner. Cass Ash would ask for a partner, and he would go, he would go to uh, uh, Scott Holmes, Scott Scott's town, please partner, Miller, and and Scott would cut a promo and said, Hey, look, you know, office give me a lot of problem by drinking Miller. I really <laughs> appreciate it, you know. We'll do it after the show. We'll go get some Miller. Okay, buddy? And, now, you know, he, he even did that, you know, backstage promo. So yes. our thing was always funny, you know, lost in translation thing. Oh, my God. You guys, I mean, what a what a colorful career from when you started, just <laughs> getting, you know, from, from your martial arts background, getting to know Eric, him bringing you in for translation, and then you actually become an icon like this wow. management icon i mean really when you look at it there hasn't been has there been another well fuji there was yeah, fuji, fuji was before me yeah he, he was, yeah it was wwe WWE. And fuji what but he didn't do a lot what you did well he didn't speak no you know? no so my thing is that i can i can have a conversational english as english is my second language but you know i, I can speak so the so the problem is right, and we'll, we'll, we'll go to this. The problem is, it makes it makes no sense for American manager or English speaking manager to manage Japanese person, right? Mm -hmm. Because the first question you ask is, well, how, he doesn't speak Japanese. The manager doesn't speak Japanese. How's he communicating with the Japanese talent? So it's look, everything we do is suspended reality, right? We make, <laughs> right. We, but you have to you have to make sense to the audience. You know, everybody knows I speak Japanese and English, mm -hmm. and and I can speak English enough to cut a promo, because what happens is if. It, but it's really cool because it can sound like broken. It can be really cool, because it sounds like broken English and it gives you more heat. <laughs> oh yeah, well, actually, I actually practice broken English. <laughs> oh now I know. Yeah, it's such bullshit too. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let me ask you something before we get to Bolnicano. Yeah. Um, is it <laughs> so fast forward just real fast for today. The way um in your expertise and um management and talking and speaking, do you like ad libbing? Did you like ad libbing compared to I mean, we are literally handed scripts nowadays. Like when yeah. I if I show up in WWE, I get a script I have to go by. Right. Now, right. I mean it's just like movie. It's just like acting. It's right. just like all of that. And yeah, I, I don't know. I yeah, almost no. feel like it's um, a lot easier for me. And, you know, they'll give me a bullet point or the point we're supposed to get across. Yes. You know? that's, 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 that's easy. It. Cause that's uh, to me, it's easier that way too. But I mean, I get it. I've done a couple movies and I get script because the, yeah. I mean, they're written that way. That's what they want. So again, at the end of the day, pro wrestlers management are amazing people because they're, they're actors, they're gymnasts, they're stump people, and they're wrestlers all in one that are actually doing all of the work. Yeah. Right? And, and, yeah. And, and I have utmost respect for someone like you and, and all the others that follows you is that what's the most amazing thing about wrestlers in general is that you can dislike somebody you're having a match with 
I'm not talking about you, but you know, I know for a fact, um, um, Buff Bagwell and Ernest Miller actually yeah. fought at the Sturgis before the match. But yet, Eric gave them a choice. He said, hey, you guys still want to go on? And without us skipping a beat, you know, Ernest- You go out there and it's business. And, and they and did a know, great job. And what's the amazing thing, you know, maybe, maybe I, it, it's, it's something that wrestler has that they can differentiate, right? Mm -hmm. Between my personal feeling against, because you give your body to somebody else. They can drop yeah, you have to trust break them. your neck and kill you. Yeah, absolutely. That's you know, if I, yeah, if I personally, you know, I, I've never really disliked anybody, but I, I, I just, I don't have to like them, you know, right. whatever, but business is business. And um, for whatever my personal reasons were, if I didn't like somebody, that's I left that in the locker room. And when right. you went out there, it was showtime because we were there to create a show and we were there to draw, to make money, to do whatever. I got that. And I think a lot of people in this business still carry it that way. And I yeah. think that's why you hear a lot of scuttle bullshit in the back because they don't carry it out to the front. Right. Right. I think yeah. if there's been a few hard punches out there to, you know, to get some people in line. I'm sure there has been. Absolutely. I'm sure there's been things where people have walked off on purpose because their, you know, their temper got the best of them. Maybe that was the best thing because they would have just made a shit show out there. OK, well, I, I do know stuff happens in a ring. When, you know, when, when somebody hits you with little potatoes, you know, what do you do? You no, know, you, you're going to give the potato right back to them. And that's, oh. that's, that's the respect that kind of happens. Now, when it gets a little carried away, that's when it gets, you know, that don't happen very often. But well, yeah. hopefully you have a good ref or a good manager on the outside to stop right. it. Like that would be you when you see that happening, oh, that yeah. would be your cue to go, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, just, you know, yeah. hey, you know, and thank God for people like you on that. I will, but, I will tell you one thing. I, okay. I, gotta, I gotta interrupt you and tell you this. The one of the Bull Nakano match you had, there was a television, I think it was a Nitro. Um, we went over the match and you said one point I held you by the hair, by the rope, by, by the, the, the uh, a rope. And I grabbed your hair, didn't do anything, just grabbed you there. And why the referee was, you know, being, being, mm -hmm. being um, distracted by bull. And when I went to the back, I got such a yelling. I mean, they were so mad at me. He said, you cannot touch a woman. Who said that? Eric told me that. And, well, and maybe that was at that time. I think he wasn't. But that's bullshit because he had Ming beat the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> you remember oh, that? Remember? Yeah. Jesus, Jenny. But I will tell you out of all the men that he had me fight and they were just, and then they put the, the cruiser weight on me. They wouldn't put the women's title right. on me, but they put the cruiser. That's right. I don't know. Anyway, one half of the other. Uh, but I will tell you, Ming was the lightest of all of oh, them. He's, 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 he he's. was a teddy bear. Oh, I, I mean, a brute, but he, I mean, he looked like a brute, but he was a teddy bear. Hell yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. So great, let's. Yeah. Amazing worker, real scary person in person. Um, you know, you know, the story goes on and on. And it's all true. Oh, they go on and on. But uh, some of them I'm going to, you know, you'll just take to your grave with you. So there's that. Um, so Bull Nakano. So. Yeah. So one of them were getting Bull Nakano over when Eric, I believe Eric was there. Um, and one of our biggest rivalries was um, part of the hog wild riding yeah. our Harleys you um, my from Mall of America to <laughs> South Dakota. Yeah. Um, and I knew how to ride with the best of them. Oh, my yeah. God. And I still have my bike. I still have the same bike, same, oh, same cool. motorcycle. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's an I antique now, just like myself. Yeah. So it's, I mean, and she runs like you wouldn't believe. It. So, oh, my God. So that match, we're well, going to take a look at that match here. We're going to see what you, so okay. let's, yeah, we're going to talk about it. So uh, um, it's coming up. Here we go. Here we go. So we're going to, uh, yeah, turn down the gimmick a little bit because sometimes we get tagged. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so here you are. Yes. This, this bull. Where are you? Are you on the motorcycle? I'm coming in on a motorcycle, my cross rocket. Yeah. Was that huh? a rented bike? Cause no, we ride bought them that out bike. There. For you, oh, for okay. You, you did buy the bike. Okay. Yeah, for you, you know, 
Yeah, there it is. I could hardly touch the ground, for God's sake. Oh, my God. Were you shitting yourself? When's the last time you rode a crotch rocket? <laughs> Look at this pig, please. I need, I need a little stilt. I need, oh. I bet you were scared as hell. No. no oh, what? whatever. Look, Look at it. you. <laughs> <laughs> you got hundreds and thousands of Harley riders out there, and you've got a oh. Japanese guy and, and uh, on a rice burner. I, I, yeah. Uh, and, and, and the best part was he had a little Japanese you know, naval flag painted on it and, and, and a crotch rocket. And, and it was a bike versus bike match. Remember? It was, yeah. Uh, the yeah. Winner I was fast other guy's bike, uh, loses bike with a sledgehammer. I was absolutely livid because I said, I know, I know we're going to do this. We're going to do that. But whatever you do, the battery is under my freaking seat. Do not take the sledgehammer to the seat and what do you do <laughs> you could have cracked that damn battery and acid everywhere i would have been oh you would have got an ass beaten that's yeah. the time i would have left the ring and beat your ass all the way to the back <laughs> look at dude look at that she was the all-american girl right here in front of all you fans now mind you these fans are not wrestling fans per se so, no, you know, we've never had this here before. No, so they're, and none of them, these are real wrestling, you know, they didn't pay to be here. They just got to ride their bike there. So, I know. <laughs> they didn't know what to expect until they no. saw her with the nunchucks. Look at this shit. Oh, yeah. And then they went crazy. So every time they liked something or she did something to me, what did they do? They started their freaking bikes and revved rev so Oh my God. Look at this shit right There's here. Hair stuff. Oh yeah. That's so good. I get <laughs> asked that today by the younger girls. How do you do that move? I said, it was the easiest move her and I did. And I'm like, they're like, what? I'm like, it's all in the timing, her grabbing my hair, me grabbing her wrists. It was just, yeah, phenomenal. Here's a key point with you in the <laughs> yeah. back. You knew even back then, Sonny, you knew that that was the camera side. <laughs> yeah, hard camera. It was the first uh, thing. You know who was great at b being wrestling manager who helped me the most is, is Bobby Heenan. Believe oh. it or not. Bobby was the best. He would come up and tell, give me a pointers. And Jimmy Hart. Um, you know, Jimmy Hart's the one who convinced Eric for me to be the manager. Are Jimmy you and kidding? Hulk. No, Jimmy and Hulk, they were on a boat together. Uh, Jimmy told me this story. They were on a boat, Jimmy, Hulk, and Eric was on the boat. Yep. Uh, and, 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 uh, you know, they, they knew they were going to bring all this Japanese in and, 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 uh, look at that move. And, uh, I, I learned that move. I took that move. I asked her from Nishiwaki, Mitsuku, oh. Nishiwaki. That was her move. And I learned it and I loved it so much. Yeah. Um, Pretty and cool. I, I, that move there, I said, I'd love to bring that to the States. And I just thought it was a fantastic move, a great comeback. Yeah. And this move here, I hated this move that she did on me. Oh my God. But anyway, there's a point here where you get involved, don't you? Um, I, I, I don't really get too, well, look at that. I don't get too much involved except the finish of this match is, is the fun part. Remember that, that's how, how they came up with we, we didn't know who pinned who or who pinned themselves. Yeah. So, so Until the, to this day, what, what really happened here? I, who, I don't know. The, but I the think confusion I, was, I think, ball one. So I go after your bike. Right. With the camera. That's but why, the that's why, yeah, that's, yeah. that's what it was supposed to be, was the confusion of who won, who did right. it. And so you could come after with the sledgehammer. Yes. Is that correct? Yes, correct. And but okay. yeah, but Look at you, you. Were Look you, at were you. you don't even know who you're cheering for. You're probably really cheering for me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I, uh, I was ho always, you know, hoping Look at to get right back. there. See? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. See, so but, but, but what happened, the best part is the end of this match where you come after me because uh, I'm out there trying to smash your bike. And and you were supposed to really put a dent on that bike, uh, on on a crotch rocket, but I think you were a little gassed. 
gassed. I think it was a rib. Dude, did you see how big that sledgehammer was? <laughs> it was, hey, it was like a 30 farm. pound. No, it was a bullshit. I think it was a sledgehammer they had. Um, I don't know. Can we fix this video? It, it, it was like, um, um, I, I don't know if it was a sledgehammer they used to put, pound the stakes in the thing or, yeah, it was, or it what? Was not a, it was not a gimmick sledgehammer. It was not. Thank you for saying that. It was not a gimmick sledgehammer. Here, here you are. Here I go. Look, you can barely lift it up over your head. <laughs> Anyway, you guys can see this better on YouTube. Um, yeah. He's hit. He's hitting the. I, I was so pissed. I was literally pissed. Like, what the fuck are you doing? I told you not to hit my seat. You and you couldn't. Japanese Thanks. bike was built so Thanks, well. Marsh. Yeah. Medusa could not uh, dent the bike, so he started ripping the fairing off the plastic. Off. The, remember that. <laughs> I tell you, I had a. There was not a gimmick, uh, uh, sledgehammer. It was thirty pounds at least, if not more. The bike more. was not gimmicked at all either. No, they didn't gimmick the bike, and I'm like, who's in the fuck is in the back laughing their ass off watching me <laughs> after this match? I'm so blown up. You're right, and yeah. Sonny's over here laughing his ass off, watching me like, what is she doing? It the bike is plastic, and I'm sitting here trying to hit the sledgehammer, and the bike would not break, and I just said. I walked right over and all I did was grab one little piece and the plastic came off and I said, fuck it. And I kicked the bike over. I'm out. I was, I couldn't even breathe because of that sledge. Amber. Yeah, you all laugh. You're like, we didn't even gimmick anything for her. God. No, best time ever. <laughs> yeah. Best. Yeah. Best time ever either. You know, yeah. um, I just, uh, I want to thank you personally. And I never really got to, you know, you and I speak intermittently every so yeah. often. And we just, we spoke here a while ago when I was on my five mile hike and it just brought some good, you know, back some good vibes. And we talked about all sorts of things. And, um, I personally want to say thank you for being in my career life, um, oh. making it memorable, making it fun. Um, those were good times. Those are the times I enjoyed oh. and I would laugh and, you know, just because there was good people around me. Oh, you know. absolutely. Thank this you. pleasure is absolutely mine. I mean, I got to interact with the Medusa. Um, um, you know, if it wasn't for you, what would the Japanese girl have done? And I'm going to tell you one quick story. Do you remember yes. I brought in Ozaki and Cutie Suzuki? Um, Vaguely, for, yes. Yeah. At the, yes. I, yeah. So they opened, the girls came over. Yeah. Uh, uh, it was Hokuto, Bo versus uh, Ozaki and Cutie. They, they did one, one match somewhere. Uh, but they actually did open the Nitro. I think it was in West Virginia or somewhere. They had, those two, they're, you know, five foot one girls. <laughs> yes. And, uh, 110 pounds. And they actually did a quite, quite one of those matches. Uh, amazing match. And it was an opening match on Nitro. Kevin Sullivan, the, the girls came back behind the curtain. The boys gave them standing ovation. And Kevin said to me, man, you know, we, how long are these girls are here? I said, they're here for a week. We want to put them on every TV we can, yada, yada, yada. You know, they're amazing. So we go to our next town. I can't remember if it was, we were doing Thunder or whatever we were doing. Mm -hmm. And the girl's name's not on the board. I go, so I go to Kevin. I go, Kevin. Didn't you want to use the girls, you know, his, and he pulled me over and he goes, Hey, Sonny, the girls are phenomenal, but they make our boys look bad. They didn't want to follow. Well, no, and the they truth didn't want to, to follow, that is, right. they didn't want to follow the girls. The truth to that is, and I'll never forget it. And I just you know, had so much respect, you know, quietly. Cause I didn't know if he was ribbing me or not with Scott Hall. One time he came out and he just said, Hey, Hey, douche. You know, hey, can you and knock a knock a knock a nano? What it, that's what he would say because he couldn't say her name. Right. Knock a knock a nano. Can you, you guys like tone it down because the, the boys after you just don't want to follow that shit. You know, yeah, no, like, that is I thought he was ribbing. Yeah. Yeah. No. And I was like, wow, 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 wow. And so, 
It is. The, the girls are now oh, fast forward today. You see yeah. some Japanese, you see Asuka um, with WWE, you see Inoue or Io Inoue, yeah. not Inoue, Io um, and a couple other girls, uh, even in AEW, which I think yeah. is great now. They're permanent. They've got great contracts. Yeah. They've, they're have they making money. Yeah. I mean, we've come a long way, baby. And you know what? You are a pioneer to all that. Yeah, well, just, you know, it, we're all a part of that. You and I together, you know, basically help make that happen and, you know, make it um, legit. Um, I think there's a lot of things I would like to see more of, more creativity with the women and angles. Yeah. Like, you know, you see the bloodline, right? It's like a right. whole year thing and they're going to probably go another year or two or whatever. Right. Right. Because there is enough storyline there. There's a big family. Sure. I get it. But yeah. where's that effort with the women, too? Yeah, I, I think, you know, unfortunately, I don't know at WWE, right. they have a women writer, but they should, if they don't have one, they should, there should be one, you know. I know um, there's women in, I thought there was, um, I think, I think the warrior, I think, I thought Dana worked in creative for a while. And then yeah, I, I thought Molly they, Holly. But they just, they just fired her, so. Oh, okay. There, yeah, okay. Then she died. I thought so. I didn't know for sure. And then I think Molly Holly worked there. I don't know if she, I don't, I think she still does. I think um, she's she, still there. But still I, don't there. Know she, I don't know if she's in, you know, and, and, and I, she, she may be a producer going over. Oh, I think she's an agent. Yeah. 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 But, I don't think she's so. Lying. I think they're, I don't know. I think Paul has a great mind. Yeah. Um, I think he has, um, you know, I think he truly I think loves he's open to it probably more than, you know, than it was. And I'd like to see that. I'd like to see kind of maybe I would love to see some type of management, a woman manager on the outside. Yeah. Yeah. I really, really would. I'd love to see that because a woman that can work too. Right. Oh, because we haven't seen that in a long time. We've seen, we had our Miss Elizabeth's, we've had our Sherry's, we've had our you know what I mean? Right. Respectfully, we had the woman's. We've had right. the, you well, know. You, know what? you 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 you're perfect for that role. You can you can, you know, you you can. I was not that. that I would work. I could kick somebody and punch somebody. Sure, that'd be great. But yeah. I'm, <laughs> but and I'm I, talking about we have a lot of great new talent that can speak. And I think working well, into I, that you know, role. Yeah, and like I said, I I can feed you all the Japanese. You know, on the other <gasps> side. Ooh, yeah. let me go. ask you before we go here. So yeah. I want to, um, where, what's going on? So you're still, are you still working with Japanese talent? Are you still working with New Japan? Tell me what's going on here. Okay. So I work with a company called Noah, which is, you know, and, and the thing, thing about what a lot of American fan doesn't understand, it's not like here. It's so adversarial between AEW and WWE. It's mm -hmm. not like that over there. Over there, New Japan talent will get, you know, to go over to A, uh, uh, to Noah. And, and all Japan, you know, people kind of work amongst inner companies. Um, they're still on the contract with the original company, but they'll go, you know, like Yuji Nagata, you remember him, the guy he used to manage. He was the uh, all Japan Triple Crown champion um, for about a year and he just mm -hmm. relinquished that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they, they work with each other um, often. And what's, uh, uh, so, you know, that all that stuff is all within realm of possibility and, and um, you know, exchanging of talents. So and, that's what you do for them? You're working with Noah is just... Yeah, I work with talent. Noah. Uh, I, you know, Great Muda is signed with Noah. So I yep. brought Muda over for AEW shows, which allows Sting to go to Noah's show Noah's. in Yokohama this year in January. And we introduced Darby Allen, one of oh, their wow. stars over wow. there. And and that was the uh, Great Muda's retirement match. Uh, Isn't it Kenny Omega with them? Kenny Omega started with uh, uh, started with DDT, which is the, another company, sister company of Noah. Noah, then, yes. Then he went to all uh, New Japan and made his name, you know, over there. And right. then I tell you, Kenny Omega is fucking amazing. Oh yeah. Oh my God, he's good. I mean, he's. His niche is like his niche is like working with Japanese. You know what yeah. I mean? He's yeah. just that's a great. I just I just love him. I love his talent. I just I, I love Kenny Omega. Um, yeah. um, so that's what you're doing. That's great. Now, I, I know that you were um, working on some things with some Japanese people, maybe. Um, but 
uh, that may have went debunked, um, rightfully so. Yeah, they, no, there was a company uh, called uh, uh, um, Joshi Dream, mm -hmm. and I told you about it. And, yes. and it's kind of great concept. They're going to do anim animation, which is Correct. kind of big, similar genre wrestling. Um, and we're going to take the, the character from anime. And I hire a bunch of Japanese ladies to play the role of this anime character for the new American company. Now, I left the company um, because they were going to name the, the company name, which is already named, mm -hmm. as, as, as uh, I felt that was derogatory to the female and, and, and Japanese with Japanese name. And, yes, you but, and I uh, spoke about it. Yeah, so I left, and I, you know, I didn't want to be associated with it in the sense that. And that's they, that's great. I mean, I think it, you know your choice is a good choice. Yeah, so so I, I left, but but the, the, I think they're having a show this month in New York. Um, yes, I got a text. I got a DM from our friend. Okay. Yeah, and so she wanted me to go meet her there, um, and uh, I'm not saying her name because I don't know if I can. Yeah. Remember the person yeah. we're talking about? Yeah. And and so um I don't think I can, but I, it would be great to go meet her for dinner. Yeah. And and you know, um she still had those issues with visa, so hopefully yeah. I talked to her a couple of days ago. She's there now. Oh, okay. So uh, -huh. uh all right. She's there now, by the way. Good. Deal. So that's that's going, I guess, or whatever's happening there. So yeah. that's going to be ex kind of exciting to see That'll how be that plays, be cool. plays and, out. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully you'll do well. I think it would. I mean, the concept is great. The concept. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And, um, I'm sure a lot of people are going to wonder what the hell this is, and then people are going to start googling and everything. So, yeah. but, <laughs> but that'll that that should be out. Um, when is that going to? air do you think when is that going to happen yeah they, i think they cut a deal with uh, uh fight tv as well who i still work for you know yes. I, I still, with the international stuff uh, so you work. still work with mike weber yeah yeah that's mike's great oh yeah. my god yeah. he's freaking amazing he's, he's, um he's so really player. quick then to to um wind this down um do you do you still work with stardom with rossi ogawa I have talked, you know, I know Mr. Ogawa, but yeah, yeah Stardom, of course, went, you know, it's it's now under Bushy Road, mm -hmm. uh, sister company of New Japan now. Correct. So, uh, yeah, I haven't talked to him, but when I do go to Japan, you know, I try to track him down and, and say hello. But, yeah. So my husband and I are planning a trip to Japan um, soon. We don't know if it's 2025, but I, I think that's what we're gearing up for. Right. Um, we, yeah, we, he's really looking forward to it. And I am too, cause that's where my been heart there before, right? Um, he's been to Korea. Well, he's been in the military for 31 years, just well, retired. If he'd been to Okinawa or. No, to... I think maybe he's passed through there, but he's never, never really been but there. If no, to, if he worked in, you know, in, in no, Korea, just I'm Korea, Japan, and eh, maybe I don't think he's ever. Maybe he's not telling you the whole. Yeah, you Korea that. was short lived. Yeah, it was different. <laughs> that's for sure. Kind of like our in Shinjuku. No, <laughs> I met a few in Shinjuku. Yeah. Flat top gaijin. I remember him. <laughs> yeah, what a flat top gaijin, henna gaijin. What the hell? <laughs> Oh my God! What was, How did what, that was go? The, what was the three strikes? Yes, I remember him. He's so <laughs> stupid. Oh my God, Sonny! Thank you so much for this oh, interview. Okay. And you're on social media. People can get yeah. you on all your social medias. We'll have it tagged in here. Yeah. Um, and uh, I appreciate it. Say hello to your wife, your kids. Oh my God, Absolutely. beautiful. Um, you're a grandpa, right? Yes, I am. Yes, you are. Oh my. I can't believe I it. Know. Well, you look great. You're aging well, my friend. Well, thank you. It all turned white, but you know, at least I still have some left. <laughs> I know, even mine. <laughs> well, mine went natural, dark too. So what the hell? Really? What, yeah, this is my natural color. I've I have not colored my hair in four years. Wow. Well, I and seen you. No, I saw you at uh, RussellCon. Yeah. You had a table right over there. You're fighting with some pop guys. I remember you, you cutting a promo against the. Uh, Pete the Pop Man. Oh, remember I don't you, remember. How do you, you remember all of this shit? 
He wanted to move your sign and you were cutting him a promo. Oh, that guy. Oh, yeah. Fucking over two <laughs> inches. I'm like, bitch, just move your stuff two inches. It's like you're on my, you're in my space. Yeah, I remember. I, I, I looked at you and I said, man, he, he had no idea who you are. <laughs> ah, my husband's like that. i have my husband's like i have no idea what's going on and i'm just not gonna <laughs> it's so good i love you sonny thank you so much love thanks you. for thanks tuning for in i'll let you know everything in the details later all right all right all right sweetheart see ya bye bye sayonara bye bye call me queen of, me queen of carnage i will beat your ass <laughs> This is my time. Busting doors, breaking glass ceilings. And I like to play. They used to call me a lunger blade, but not anymore. I am Medusa and always will be Medusa. And that's what I think of the Women's Championship belt.